working the legs a bit with the seated pose of the butterfly, half butterfly straddle and caterpillar. We come up a little bit higher now, we start to work on the hips. And quite a juicy one for the hips is shoelace. Where you bring one knee on top of the other, often you lift up to snuggle down, and then you sit back down again. First thing to check always is any pain in the knees. If the bottom knee doesn't like this, straighten the bottom leg. If the top knee doesn't like it, you can put some support between the legs. Now some people find the shoelace better if you sit on the floor. It just provides a bit more juice into the hips. But for many people, especially beginners, or those with very tight hips, they need to sit up on something. Otherwise this pose just isn't going to work for them. The cushion you can use here is nice to just rotate it 45 degrees. Now you have a line for each leg. You just put this underneath you, and now this pose is a piece of cake. You can stay here for half an hour, you can watch TV, no problem to it. If there is some problems to it, we've got some props to help you. So if you're not coming forward very far, it's again nice to have support so your body can relax. So you can bring a bolster in and that might also be able to support your head so you can relax your neck. If you're not able to come that far forward, you could use the bolster for forehead support. If you're coming further down, you could use the bolster for your arms or perhaps just your forehead. If you don't have a bolster or a block, it could serve a similar function. You can have the high setting of the block, resting your elbows onto the block, head into your hands. And then as you open up, just switch the height setting. Eventually you come lower and lower. Until eventually you're all the way down. If you've got sandbags to work with, again rooting the top of the thigh can be a nice po a nice way to uh, find a bit of uh, weight into the top of the thighs and then come forward. Or if you're further down and you've got someone to help, they can put the sandbag on your back. So again, the weight of the sandbag just helps make the flexion a little bit juicier. And you just marinate here for five or 10 minutes. Or one minute. For the students that are much more externally rotated, and I'm not, so I really can't show you this one too much. You start to bring the feet further forward. As you do that, the sensation in the knees might increase, and that's not a good sign. This is meant to do work with the hips. But for some people, the feet might start to slip here. Again, you can use the sandbags to just restrain movement, just to help keep the feet in that position, especially as you start to come forward. Even on top of the feet can feel nice. Some people, just sitting up tall is enough. There's enough work into the hips and they just stay here. Now we have options of doing other things with the upper body. You can do upper body yin as well. You can do a side bend. You're walking your hand out to the side, maybe something with the back hand behind your, or the hand behind your back. Now again, you're kind of hanging in space here, so the muscles are engaging. But if you can rest your elbow into a block, now you can relax. Depending how flexible you are, you can switch the height setting of the blocks, going lower and lower. So maybe after a two or three minutes, you might get to the point where the elbow's on the floor. But you don't have to get there all at once. Some people in the young world know this as the cow face. In the cow face, we do the traditional hand behind your back. But for some people who can't clasp their hand behind the back, this is where the straps they make it accessible. And then it has the option, maybe they're using her hair, the ponytail, but in my case, I don't use my hair, so just having a strap here, again, creates the length, the extended reach, to allow you to feel something into the shoulders.